Ola, and welcome once again to the Shaper small engine shop and two car garage. Today's subject is this pile of plastic, aluminum, more plastic, more aluminum, some steel, lots of nuts and bolts. This was formerly known as a Echo PB 500T backpack blower. Pretty nice backpack blowers. 50 cc's. I think that's what they are. This one was made in October 2011 and I got it from my friend Jake and Jake said it just won't start and guess what Jake was correct it will not start I have pulled on this thing a hundred times I've never gotten it to fire it had decent compression and I was had good fire I was convinced that it had an air leak in it. So, in order to test for an air leak, you got to seal off the carburetor and you got to seal off the exhaust. And then you get your mighty back and try to pump air into the crankcase and see if it'll hold pressure. Well, I couldn't get this thing, this engine here, I couldn't get this thing to hold one ounce of pressure. Just couldn't pump it up. So I kept fooling with it, kept fooling with it, and finally concluded I'm going to have to disassemble this thing down to the lowest common denominator, get the engine out of it, where I can see what's going on. I can check out the seal on this side and I can check out, partially check out the seal on that side. So I began the disassembly. And if you have ever worked on one of these things before, they are a pain to fool with. This long tube this the blower tube. It is awkward to fool with, and the whole thing is just awkward. All of these backpack blowers are awkward. But anyway, <coughs> excuse me. I have disassembled this this thing to where it is now in one million pieces. I actually. had to make two new plugs to plug up the exhaust, plug up the carburetor side. And once I got the, the engine out where I could see what I was doing, it did hold pressure. I got seven pounds of pressure in it and it held pressure. So, of course I was soaking it with uh, soapy water to see if it was bubbling anywhere, but it wasn't. So, a crankcase leak, a bad seal, a base gasket leak, that is not the issue with this blower. I put a new carburetor on it, no change whatsoever. Would not even pop. So, I'm not sure what the next step is here. Certainly going to involve involve reassembly, and I can tell you, as we do in the business world, if something happens, if you have an accident, you fill out an accident report, and that goes to HR. 
Well, I'm sure I'm going to have to fill, I hope I'm going to have to fill out an accident report because if I get this thing all back together, it's going to be an accident. And if I get it actually running again, uh, it's going to be a double accident. So I just wanted to show you this mess, what you get into, and I'm going to start putting this thing back together. Now, based on taking it apart, that's going to be a couple of hours. So I'm going to turn you off and make this a part one. And when I get it reassembled and ready to try to get it to run again, I'll turn you back up. So thanks for watching. Hope this helps somebody. Hola, and welcome once again to the Schaefer Two Car Garage and Small Engine Shop. Well, this is part two. I think I may be able to put two videos about this thing into one video. I figured out one way to do that. We'll see if it works or not. But this is what about seven or eight days ago was a huge pile of aluminum, plastic, rubber, steel parts, about a thousand parts. And what has happened since that time is Mrs. Small Engine Shop and I had to go to Florida. So we drove from Louisiana down to Gainesville, Florida, visited with some of her cousins and aunts down there, came back. I had taken this thing apart before we went to Florida. We came back. I got in some new parts for it. I'll cover that in just a minute. And started reassembling it. Now, if you want a learning exercise, take something like this apart and let it sit for a week and then start trying to put it back together when you don't exactly remember how it came apart and where everything went. It's it's a several day excursion doing that. I got it back together. I only had two parts left. I couldn't figure out where they go. One, this little strap probably goes on up here somewhere. I'm not sure where it came off or where it goes back. So it's off. And then another little bracket here that looks like it would squeeze a cable in between the two pieces of it and I don't have the remotest idea where it goes either. Not sure it's off of this thing but I think it is. So when we got back I started reassembling it. I had gotten a new car put on it and I put it back together and it would not fire. Actually, I did get it to fire briefly on the starting bench with starting fluid. I finally got it to pop off and it would rev up and stay revved up, but it wouldn't slow down. It wouldn't take any throttle response. As soon as you hit the throttle, it died. And so I took that carburetor off, cleaned it up. It has gone back to the manufacturer. And I have bought now what is a third carburetor. This is a HIPAA carburetor. And I've used some HIPAA stuff before. It's pretty good quality. And now we have a HIPAA carburetor on here. Now, I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer and show you something not only about the HIPAA carburetor, but about the 
OEM carburetor here, uh, a difference, and the same which applied to the carburetor I just sent back after market. So let me bring you in and show you this. This is the OEM Walbro 139 WLA-1 carburetor that I couldn't get the thing to fire at all with this. So I ordered an aftermarket one. It's gone back. Now I've got this HIPAA carburetor on here with both the aftermarket and the HIPAA unit were set up where the throttle lever had to be pulled up to operate to open and close the butterfly. But the way these things are built, they have to be pulled down to operate the butterfly. So this is the little OEM arm that came off the original carburetor and it's real short and it doesn't have a whole lot of leverage. So I just took the arm off of the aftermarket and the HIPAA, turned them around where you pulled, now pulled down on them to open the throttle. I had to do that on both of the carburetors. And these carburetors are designed, the first two carburetors are designed with the tiniest little jet openings here, basically unadjustable. But you can buy a special tool that's got a micro head on it, it's supposed to be, I think, a micro D head, mini D, micro D, and it's supposed to fit in to these little holes where you can adjust the jets on it. Well, this is the tool I bought. It won't go into the OEM carb at all, but it did go in the HIPAA and it does did go in the uh, uh, first OEM carb, but the head here is round. And it takes, I don't know, a mini Pac-Man or a mini single D or something to fit on the screws in there. And so this tool was rounded. It is a complete piece of trash. And I was going to send it back. And the manufacturer said, uh, never mind. We'll just give you your money back. But the Hippocarb actually in place of these little round jets, it actually has small screws. So it is fully adjustable. All you have to have is some type of a small screwdriver like this, or somewhere up here, I've got some little black screwdrivers that are real small. Here, here's one of them that are real small, and they're just a perfect fit if this carburetor runs and if this carburetor needs to be adjusted. So I've got the tool I need and I have ordered another of these mini single D tools just to have it in stock. I don't mind buying a tool. Uh, as you can see, I have plenty of tools, but a special tool is it's okay with me. It's seven or eight, nine dollars. Hey, uh, if it'll save me some time down the road, that's great. Uh, I'll show you a tool I just bought. Have you seen these little mini blow torches? I bought this. I had one use for it. And since I've had it, But I've used it half a dozen times. So much easier than fooling with the big torch. 
if you're trying to heat up a bearing race or something like that that just needs a little heat or even seal up a shrink uh, shrink tubing on a piece of wire very handy little tool Sondico is the brand here and uh, I thought I would use it one time and I've used it half a dozen anyway so it's been very handy so let's move back a little bit we'll put the PB500T down on my workmate starting bench where I can get a good pull on it let's see if if it'll run be back with you all right I've got it clamped on to my starting table here and I wanted to mention one other thing about these backpack blowers they are the most awkward thing in the world to work on these big tubes are awkward they get in the way and if you take the big tube off well that takes the throttle off of it so they're just a nuisance if i had a workbench that was set up like an island like an island in a kitchen where you could get all around it it would be handy i can do that on this thing but it's down low and I've got to sit on my stool and all my tools are up here so I'm getting up and getting down it's just a pain in the neck but it's done now and let's see what we got I've replaced the return line and the uh, intake line I can see fuel coming through the return line choke zone most of the backpack blowers that I fooled with like to start on choke and have a little bit of the throttle opening let's see <laughs> let's see if this one's even going to run Hats off to Mr. Hippa for his carburetor. Let's take it out and run it a little bit. All right, I had a little failure on the, one of the clips on the shoulder strap, but it's fixed.
this project is complete. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps someone.